John, I have a picture of this by 30. I'm going to start with a workshop. Notice of public meeting of the City Commission of the City of Brownsville. Pursuant to Chapter 551, Title 5 of the Texas Government Code, the Texas Open Meetings Act notice is hereby given that the City Commission of the City of Brownsville, Texas, in accordance with Article 5, Section 12 of the Charter of said city, will convene a workshop and a regular meeting on Tuesday, September the 4th, 2007, at 5.30 p.m. and 6 p.m. in the Commission Chambers on the second floor of the Brownsville City Hall Federal Building, located at 1001 East Elizabeth Street, Brownsville, Cameron County, Texas. Workshop item A, discussion regarding funding for the Gladys Porter Zoo. Beginning up. Uh, Mr. Whitfield, uh, I'm going to talk with you to help you. Please come forward and state your name for where everybody knows who you are. But. Pat Birchfield, I'm director of the Gladys Porter Zoo. And before I start, I just want to take this opportunity to congratulate the commissioners on the Imagine Brownsville workshops. I think that was a wonderful exercise and, and we got to all hear from your various constituents about the things that are important to them. Congratulations on a, a very good program. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I'm going to begin by saying that the Gladys Porter Zoo is the Rio Grande Valley's largest man-made tourist attraction with an average of 360,000 visitors a year. Sixteen years ago, in August of 1991, the City of Brownsville voters passed a bond election which dedicated $1,894,000 for Gladys Porter and Porter Zoo improvements. But what I want you to do is take note of the, the context of that. It's currently estimated that these additional capital funds will be needed in the next five years just to keep the zoo operating in a professional manner. This does not include expanding the zoo or noticeably increasing programs, but would make it possible to continue operating a quality zoological and botanical mark, a park in a manner that would be a credit to the Rio Grande Valley. Well, uh, the last of these funds were expended approximately 11 years ago. In recent years, thanks to the Brownsville Community Improvement Corporation, funds have been made available to carry out or to help to complete the following improvements. Construct an additional parking lot at the corner of 6th and Ringgold Streets. The Valley Zoological Society purchased the land. Reinforce and repair bridges over the Rasaka throughout the zoo exhibits as they were becoming unsafe. Replace wooden slats in the zoo's perimeter fence which had been vandalized. Replace the metal flow-through gates in the zoo's Rasaka which maintained birds within their geographic areas. And at the end of this year, in 2008, the BCIC funds will pay for the materials to replace the rotten lumber and rusted metal in the zoo's 34-year-old free flight South American aviary, which must be closed for major repairs. <coughs> BCIC was also a major source of funds for the zoo's Indo-Australian walkabout bird feeding encounter, an entirely new exhibit. In each case, zoo in-house labor was used to do the actual construction work, the one exception being the parking lot on 6th Street. The most frequently asked question by potential zoo visitors is what's new at the zoo? Recent Zoofari funds have also helped to construct the walkabout, the giant tortoise display, and the new Realm of the Dragon exhibit. However, this points out the need of an educational, recreational, tourist-based facility to continually renew, update, and add new displays and exhibits. The Valley Zoological Society and the Zoological uh, Endowment Board, recognizing the considerable needs of the zoo, launched the Renew the Zoo campaign in order to increase revenue available for operations and capital projects. The current drive goal is a total of $4,250,000, of which $3 million are for endowment and $1,250,000 for capital projects, which will include a new two times larger gift shop, which will help to increase the zoo's revenue 
as well, well as the sales tax, which goes to the city, which in 2006 was approximately $40,000. A redesigned exit and entrance will help to more efficiently accommodate zoo visitors on busy days and to deal with increased future attendance. So far, the Valley Zoological Society and the endowment boards have raised over $3,500,000. Thanks to the hard work of our elected representative, Senator Eddie Lucio Jr. and Representative Eddie Lucio III, we have received a $600,000 matching grant, keyword there, matching grant, from the State of Texas Parks Grants Program in order to develop the new South Texas Discovery Education Center complex and botanical exhibit, which is proposed for the current abandoned railroad track right-of-way property. Zoo staff and city staff are currently working together to make this dynamic new display a reality. However, in short, we are operating a 36-year-old facility with much greater demands on repair and maintenance just in order to maintain the status quo. In 1972, the city participation in the zoo annual budget was 19.2% of our annual operating budget. Today, the city's contribution of 300000 represents 7.9 of our annual operating budget. What we are requesting is that the city increase this amount by an additional 300000 which would put the city of Brownsville contribution at 16% of our annual budget and get pretty close to the level that we were uh, 34 years ago. So what we are saying is that we have gotten wonderful support from BCIC, from the Zoological Society, and the City of Brownsville. We know you've done as much as you were able to do in a lot of very difficult years, but if we're to be able to continue to present a world-class tourist attraction, the Gladys Porter Zoo here in the Valley, we have to get additional funding from the city, and I respectfully make that request and I'd be happy to address any questions that members of the Commission might have at this time. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mr. Birchfield, a quick question. I'm sure you have a breakdown for the past five or more years, but in terms of revenue we've brought in from zoo visits, you know, what are those numbers like? I'm sure there'd be an increase each and every year, but how much do you bring in? Uh, Attendance-wise, uh, what, a million nine hundred thousand? A million nine hundred thousand last year. Uh, and I would point out that of our total budget, uh, salaries and wages constitute over 51 percent. And as I mentioned in one of our earlier uh, get-togethers, that several staff members are currently occupying what would be several full-time positions. As a matter of fact, uh, when uh, our former zoo director, Dr. Forrest, retired and we promoted uh, Colette Adams to general curator and development director or grants writer, uh, we now have a reptile curator, a senior uh, staff position that's vacant. And we also have another staff position that is currently being funded by grant monies from another source. So staffing and, and having the people to do the work is our number one preoccupation. For example, when, when you ask the question, uh, with the monies from BCIC, virtually all of the construction has been done with our in-house maintenance <coughs> department, which meant while they're doing that, they're not doing maintenance. So it's kind of a self-perpetuating cycle. Some of this money would go toward additional maintenance people to help maintain the zoo in a workmanlike condition. Do we know out of the, uh, the million nine, how many of them were outside of Brownsville, outside of the state? or uh, way, Do you all track that? Or? Yes, we do track that. And uh, I don't have that in front of me, but. Uh, or do we know if they stayed in our local hotels? And I mean, and, and the reason why I, I ask is, and I think this, this should go to 
it's the same for all of our museums, is if we attract outside visitors outside Bronzeville and they stay at our hotels, well, we should use that as a mechanism to, to take funding from here to go to there. And that's just, that's just my way of thinking, but I think that data would... would uh, we started on. last week, and I can give you those breakdowns. I can get with you and, and send you that material. I have all of that. I just don't have it at my fingertips. No uh, we started collecting zip codes from every single zoo visitor a week ago <clears throat> so that we can track all of that for you because we have the same interest you do. But uh, the fact is uh, we are the single biggest man-made tourist attraction in the valley. And with 360,000 visitors a year, uh, it's considerable. It sure is. Thank you, sir. I'd like to thank you for everything you do, and I just wanted to say sorry for coming here late, but um, I like what y'all are doing. We talked at these um, Imagine Brownsville. I'm sure you've been to a couple of them. I we was try to, at three of the four. We try to figure out what Brownsville stands for. What's our identity? The closest thing that I can think of is our Gladys Porter Zoo. That's, you know, statewide known and maybe even nationally known. Nationally known. So it's in our best interest, the city's best interest, to, to look out for what I believe is our landmark of Brownsville right now. This is a world-renowned zoo, renowned zoo. And um, they're facing accreditation. You might want to touch on that because that's very important. Uh, Please, matter of fact, I got a uh, an email today from the Association of Zoos and Aquariums, our national accrediting organization, with a list of potential inspectors to uh, look at, which I have to return to them tomorrow. So sometime in October, the accreditation team will visit, and one of the things they look at is governance and financial stability. That's top on their list. So we're facing an accreditation inspection probably mid or end October. November at the latest. Pat, very briefly, because we're limited on time, uh, this additional three hundred thousand dollars will go to uh, maintenance and operation. Or? Maintenance and operation, okay. and that will hopefully free up the funds from Zufari and our other fundraisers uh, to help with developing new displays. Because okay. the last few years, a lot of that money has had to go straight into operation to keep uh, the facility functioning. When's the last time you've done capital improvements for the zoo? Well, we can major, major capital improvements. Major uh, that last bond issue back in 1991. 91. Okay, so it's been quite a while. Okay. Yeah, and we need we need a major infusion to do some new exhibits. Okay, um, as commissioners and mayor, we're here to listen to the needs of the community. Mr. Birchfield has to be put in the agenda to let you know what his needs are, not his particularly, but the zoo's needs, and uh, hopefully this commission will consider it and fund you to meet those challenges that you're facing. Um, uh, unless there's any other questions, we have uh, another presentation. Mayor, I've got a question for uh, Mr. Kabler. Yes, sir. Mr. Kabler, I think that we had talked about uh, setting aside a umbrella for the, uh, the cultural arts, and that also included some funding for the, the zoo as well, correct? Correct. What were the amounts that were going to be uh, put under the umbrella and then also for the, the zoo? 325000 for the zoo, or 25% of the uh, uh, hotel motel tax. Okay. 325000 for uh, the cultural. Uh, okay, and so that's already been set aside and that's, that's on the, uh, the list as far as itemization for the budget. Is that, that correct? Is, that is in the budget that we have been presenting over the uh, last few months, yes. Okay. And the zoo at this time is asking for only 300000 is that correct? No, that's an additional 300000 That 325. my impression is that's a $25,000 increase. Okay. Uh, yeah, the, the, the current uh, past budget has been 300000 for the zoo. With the proposal of the existing uh, <coughs> budget, it only increases it by 25000 That's it. That gives him a shortfall of 275000 He'll take the 275000 and the 25000 to make up the 300000 That's what you're saying, right, Pat? Yeah. That's correct. And again, uh, we're hoping to expand our gift shop operation. And last year, we uh, paid in 40000 in sales tax. So once we do that, hopefully, we'll be paying more money back into the city. And the budget process, that's, that's the purpose of hearing uh, 
there needs to come we can make changes to the budget right now before we adopt it so based on what the Gladys Porter Zoo is requesting for an additional 300,000 for operation and maintenance to keep the zoo going uh, to the standards it should be uh, we would have to uh, authorize the additional fun funding of 275 or just do 300,000 and, and set aside the 325 from the budget okay so you're seeking an additional 275 in total yes okay okay thank you pat appreciate it thank you very much and thank and you for we thank you for the work you do at the zoo and, and i know it's a challenge here okay we have a uh, workshop item b item b discussion regarding the medicultural district May I was uh, asked by uh, uh, Mrs. O'Connors to do a, present a presentation to City Commission regarding the activities and, and what this organization has been doing for Bronzeville. Um, as you know, they, they, they're composed of approximately, I think, 12 or more organizations, and um, I'm glad they've uh, decided to come by, come by here today to, to enlighten us on their information. Um, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Honorable Mayor, members of the commission, I'm Melanie Connor. I happen to be one of 17 representatives to the Medicultural District, uh, whose mission is to promote and enhance family-oriented and historical and cultural educational activities in the district. The purpose is to encourage orderly growth <coughs> and development as a tourist destination through cooperative programming and event promotion. I wanted to give you a little history of how the cultural district came about. Brownsville's first cultural district was established in April of 1998. It was during that time that the Dean Porter Park was raising money to proceed with major renovations of the park. A $3 million gift from the Roy F. and Joanne Cole Mitty Foundation enabled the park project to move ahead with final construction drawings and begin phase one. At that time, the board of directors of the Dean Porter Park began to think outside the box. Think about what would be a way to enhance the entire area. After all, we have a, na a natural setting, a natural clustering of varied activities of the area. It took many months to formalize the idea. But after approaching the city of Brownsville with the idea, we gathered those organizations within the 6th and 7th Street area and began our, our incorporation with bylaws and officers. Additional consultants and participants were a part of this organization. I wanted to point out to you that every one of them were volunteers on the project. You have, uh, or will have, a list of the uh, um, organizations represented in the Cultural District. I'd like to take a minute and read those for our audience because maybe most of them are not real familiar. You're seeing a visual picture of the different entities within uh, the Cultural District. But you have the Dean Porter Park renovation, you have the Costumes of the Americas, you have the Children's Museum, you have the Camille Leitner Theater, the Gladys Porter Zoo, Sombrero Festival, the historic Brownsville Museum, the Brownsville Cemetery Association, Independent School District, Cummings Junior High, Brownsville Parks and Recreation, which was formerly the Girls and Boys Club. You have the Brownsville Visitors and uh, Convention Bureau, the Federal Courthouse, Cameron County Courthouse, the Police Department, the Downtown Development, the Heritage Office, and the Museum of Fine Arts. 
plus four representatives at large, a professional accountant, landscape architect, and a licensed attorney. Meetings were monthly. Now that is nine years of meetings. We continued to have monthly meetings with these organizations. One year after the original um, cultural district was formulated, we again approached the city of Brownsville. And that was to consider naming cultural district number one as the Roy F. and Joanne Cole Mitty Cultural District. This was to the appreciation of the most generous donation to this city. This was approved, and the city will forever be indebted to the Mitty Foundation for its gift. They unknowingly created the nucleus from which we are now enjoying the benefits and will continue for years to come. I do want to report that the Dean Porter Park set aside from our budget $100,000 and the Mitty contributed additional $50,000 toward the construction of an appropriate sign at the entrance off the expressway on 6th Street. The monies has been in a special escrow account <coughs> and the design will be forthcoming and the construction implemented when TxDOT completes the expressway. We assure you we will return for your approval once the design is completed. Now for the past nine years, as I stated earlier, these groups of volunteers have met to discuss their own individual activities, but in a group setting. None of us in any way wants to compete with each other's events, but by sharing our plans of events and activities, we can avert any conflict and be of help when needed. We have guest speakers on occasion on subjects affecting the district. We're here today to inform you that we are a dedicated, responsible organization. We ask you to please utilize our efforts when you can. Collectively, we are a large group of volunteers. Our future image relies in this city. We have never obtained a tax-exempt status because most of the entities are their own 501c3s. Our goal is to be recognized as that specific district, as it is, both by the city itself and by those visiting the area. Possibly, the future will provide added structure and financial opportunities for growth and sustained development. Other views of the future include the following possibilities. Broaden the area to invite family-oriented businesses, such as coffee shops, sandwich shops, bookstores, and someday maybe a bed and breakfast or a small hotel that could service the visitors to the area. Banner on the light poles designating the area signage on the expressway coming into the cultural district. We have within uh, numerous times uh, visited with TxDOT, but it, we need the city's um, push behind TxDOT to help us get that. We have asked most of our um, organizations when they advertise their events and the like, and their direction to where they're located to mention that it is in the heart of the Midi Cultural District. This 6th and 7th Street corridor leads right into the center of Brownsville. Other areas is transportation into the district. And maybe someday we would have transportation within the district. The trolleys, security, possibly bike patrol, the, the area is growing. Many entities want to walk the district, which is what we envision. Added parking, especially during the special events such as Zufari, Boo at the Zoo, Sombrero Fest, Play Day in the Park, and any other large gathering or festivals. One of our primary concerns is maintenance. With the completion of the lovely Lineal Park, 
added maintenance crews to assure the district looks always its best. Enter, entering to the city and the major financial district. A couple of other items are pamphlets specified of the Midi Cultural District, providing a map and a brief description of each organization would guide the visitors and be used for promotion of the district. These are just a few items discussed over the years of the wants of the Midi Cultural <coughs> District. How can we as a unit help promote the city of Brownsville as a major, true, cultural and tourist destination? We're here to help the city as it moves forward. We are on the border by the sea with so many possibilities. Remember, the north side of town has the growth area, but it's the south end that has the most charm, the most history, the most architecture, the interest, and the culture. Before closing, I would like to provide, and we have been seeing that, a brief pictorial review of the different organizations within, within the uh, district. This natural clustering of family organizations brings together unique <laughs> offerings. Where else can a vacation offer so much? And for our own families, a wonderful time. I would like to recognize those representatives and some of their board members here today to rise. These are people who have been um, constantly a part of the cultural district. Would those individuals who have been a part of the cultural district please stand? <laughs> if anyone would like to address the commission, or if any members of the commission has any questions of any of the organizations therein, please feel free to address them. Otherwise, this will um, conclude our presentation. Did you have something to say, Mayor? I, I was. Uh, is somebody here want to say something? Go ahead, Mayor. No, go ahead. Well, first of all, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm the first one to say we welcome volunteers, even though, you know, sometimes uh, people question motives or whatever. It's important to have volunteers in our community and where y'all can come together and share information and, and support each other when there's no conflict. Sometimes, obviously, you will have conflicts, but that's okay. Uh, you can either set them aside or work through them or go each other's way for that specific uh, uh, um, item or, or event or whatever. But uh, certainly, we, we, uh, we uh, support all the volunteers that we can get in the community. Uh, you showed what you could do uh, with the Dean Porter Park renovation with working with parks, the Parks Department, who did a lot to make that happen along with you all, and uh, we thank you. Well, uh, we appreciate the opportunity. I might also bring up here that most of those organizations that are represented here could not function if it was not for their volunteers. That's right. um, the hours spent uh, in, in, in each endeavor is, is Momental. Uh, it, it is so important that we keep our volunteers informed and utilized in this community. We cannot expect the city to, to, to provide everything all the time. And volunteers have shown that they can put together and see through the opportunities that are there. Uh, hopefully this has given you some idea of the overview of who we are and what we are and uh, how our individual organizations can help and put a face on, on the family, on the culture, on the history, the education, and the um, recreation of Brownsville. Thank you for coming. Our meetings are held on the second Monday of each month. We move around in the di district um, with our lunching, and we invite any of you at any time to drop in and sit through our meetings and you will see what all does go on in the Midi Cultural District. Ms. O'Connor, one final thing before you go. Um, because I put a lot of emphasis on culture, okay? Uh, we're trying to get funding for some of the entities that have requested funding. 
Perhaps we can do a little more to educate the citizens of Brownsville the importance of culture that in order to evolve as a community. We can grow as a community in numbers, but unless we evolve in culture as a community, we are a dying community. That's correct. Because and we need your help for that. That's important for our, our purpose of being, being educated, right. and as a, a citizen, and something to offer to the outside world that comes and visits us. When you invite people to your home, no matter how poor you are, you want to show your best. And the uh, cultural entities, that's what they do for Brownsville, whether it's a zoo, whether it's Brownsville Fine Arts, whether it's Camille Playhouse, whether it's a historic museum. We must support these entities as a community in order to evolve as a community. Thank you Thank very much. you. Thank you. Did anyone have any questions that needed to be answered, or were there any members of the cultural district well, that... that like to speak. Melanie, I just wanted to thank you all yes. personally and everybody in the Midi Cultural District for preserving our city parks heritage and promoting that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate that. Thank you, Ms. Corner. Thank you. Thank you for your hard work. They inspired me to buy a new jacket. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, man. Thank you very much. Okay, um, we're going to move uh, on to our regular meeting. There's no workshop, so if we can have. Uh, can we have the, a pledge uh, of allegiance? Uh, who's going to say the? <coughs> say the pledge. Oh, that's correct. The flag, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, in the midst of liberty and justice for all. Under the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to the Texas one and indivisible. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have Reverend Will Aiton to lead us in a word of prayer, the invocation. Thank you, Will. Good to see you. Good to see you. Let us pray. Gracious Father in heaven, maker of heaven and earth, we come to praise you for your goodness and your mercy to us. We thank you for this free country that you've given us and pray that we may never take our heritage for granted. We come now to ask your blessings upon our community, our state, and our nation. Protect us from those within and without who seek to do us harm. Especially bless our troops overseas and bring them home safely to families and loved ones once again. We ask especially that you bless our mayor, city commissioners, and this meeting with your wisdom, your guidance, and your direction, that we may ever grow together in faith, unity, and spirit. These things we ask in the precious and holy name. Amen. 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 Uh, please be seated. Thank you, Will. Okay, we're going to go to the public comments, but since there's some um, misinformation, I'm going to remind people what the public comments is about. Uh, I, I would like to see it be constructive and beneficial to the community and to the commission to have a dialogue between the citizens and the commission as to what people's opinions are. Unfortunately, some people don't understand what the com uh, public comments is all about. I try to uh, accommodate everybody. Uh, unfortunately, some people don't understand uh, in tr in my efforts in trying to do that. I moved the public comments from the rear, from the last on the agenda to the first thing on the agenda. And again, I think some people uh, not only do not appreciate it, but they, uh, they uh, take it uh, uh, to, to an opportunity to uh, be misinformed on what the public comment is all about. I'm going to read them to you. The public comment form is de designated for speakers to address the commission on a subject that's, that is not a public hearing. The commission, through third parties or directly or indirectly, cannot communicate with the speaker. The speaker is to address the mayor and not to attack, not to be personal, and just speak his mind in a constructive, hopefully positive way. There is a three-minute time limit per speaker. Okay, public comment forms are located on the second floor at the entrance of the commission chambers on the day of the meeting. 
Public comment forms must be filled out and presented to the city secretary staff 15 minutes prior to the meeting to be considered recognized. Public comment forms are not accepted after 6 p.m. <clears throat> okay. The public comment uh, must be, there's only a lot of 15 minutes to hear everybody. Before, what I tried to do is divide the 15 minutes, which would reduce the amount of time per speaker. But that was in an effort to give everybody a chance. Unfortunately, uh, from what I've been reading, and, and people don't understand, and, and I want to apply the rules. I'm going to go by the rules. So we're going to have 15 minutes of public comments. When the 15 minutes are out, up, they're out. So whoever signed up early enough gets to speak. Whoever didn't doesn't get to speak. You have to come back next week. So the first uh, public speaker to sign up is Francisco Cifuentes, and I hope each and every one of you try to understand what we're trying to do here and conduct the meeting. Uh, Francisco Cifuentes uh, was the first to sign up. Uh, such a gentleman. I know he'll behave because he is a gentleman, and I look forward to hearing what he has to say. Francisco. Mr. Cifuentes, would you please state your name? Good afternoon, uh, Mayor, Commissioners, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Francisco Cifuentes. I'm a resident and taxpayer of the city of Brownsville. Um, I commend you for your words, and I think uh, this public comment has been misused, and I do agree with the Commission and with you, Commissioner. I'm, I mean, uh, Mayor, and uh, I have conducted myself professionally. I do understand the rules, and uh, by the way, I was one of the promoters of the public forum and all the taxing entities here in, in this county. I just came back from uh, Commissioner's Court where I have urged the Commissioner's Court to address and uh, get together with the City of Brownsville, with PUB, with the Port of Brownsville to address all the concerns when uh, we have a, a hurricane coming in and uh, we have a line of people waiting to fill up their bags. We have elderly people waiting, and they have to fill up their own bags. I think that's unacceptable, completely unacceptable. Uh, and I do, did sign for, for as a citizen's concern, and this concerns me a lot that I saw some people there, and I have some neighbors in Rio del Sol. They're 75, 80 year olds, and they cannot go fill up their bags. They need someone. And I think we need to hire people in all levels of uh, the city and uh, I think they should be entitled and obligated to do whatever is necessary to protect and to serve the citizens of Brownsville. Uh, Mr. Chagall made a comment in one of the meeting, previous meetings that we should have those bags already uh, available for citizens, especially the elderly. Uh, you have not set up a system that it has uh, to be done that way. Please see that if you can do that and we can open more distributing centers with the sand like the county did and i did thank him and commanded for it to open those other places we need to address that before it is too late and uh, we can protect and serve the citizens of brownsville thank you very much thank you mr Cifuentes. Uh, stephanie herwick would you please come forward and Good evening. Good evening, Mayor. <clears throat> I am a representative. My name is Stephanie Herwick. I'm actually a citizen of Westlaco, but I represent some of the citizens um, in Brownsville today. I am a representative of a group called No Border Wall. <clears throat> and we're a grassroots coalition dedicated to opposing the building of a, constructing a border wall along the Rio Grande River. Um, our coalition is composed of a great variety of individuals and groups throughout the Rio Grande Valley. We have environmentalists, we have humanitarians, we have business and community leaders, uh, we have landowners who will be directly affected, we have people in our group who are um, believe that the wall is a tremendous waste of taxpayer dollars and we also have citizens who just believe that this is a terrible symbol to send to Mexico and the rest of the world. We are aware 
that this is federal legislation. The Secure Fence Act of, of 2006 is what um, has created this um, desire of the federal government to build the wall. And we know that the only way to, cha to stop the wall is to change that legislation. The only way to change the legislation is to change national attitudes. And I know that you s a lot of you are aware that people up north don't have an a, a good picture of wh where it is we live. They don't understand that we have a rich culture. They don't understand that we have unique natural areas down here. So what our group has set out to do as just a grassroots effort is to make sure that people up north do know that and try to get that national attitude to change so that we can change the law. Our aim right now is to provide venues to um, highlight our culture and our people and our communities and our nature. And so we are having a um, rally and an event in Brownsville on September 29th at Dean Porter Park 5 p.m. This is called the Brownsville No Border Wall Pachanga in the Park. It's going to um, expose the world to our culture, hopefully. Um, we have in the past, um, as you can see in your, in your brochures there, we have um, garnered national press for our events. Um, and we just want to show the people in Washington that a border wall could be very devastating for our area. Um, <coughs> we welcome the opportunity to talk with you as individuals because we want your input. We want to use this uh, event to um, show what what we have in Brownsville. So we would like to be contacting you. Um, Thank you, Mr. Howick. Your time is up. Thank, Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And please uh, don't think I, I'm trying to cut you off to cut you off. That's the time you're allowed. Thank you. Uh, um, number three is Don Crow. Uh, pass. Okay, pass. Okay. Uh, Mr. John Kinch. Even though you just said my name, I'll repeat it right now. My name is John Kinch. Kinch. Okay. Uh, Mayor and Commissioners, this is the third City Commission meeting that I've attended in as many months. This open forum before the me uh, meeting meant to give citizens a chance to speak on non-agenda items caught my attention, particularly because people step up to the mic and speak their minds, usually about the things that they think we need as a city. A lot of times reduced to simplest terms, they usually ask for more of the things that taxes pay for while demanding that you lower taxes. It just boggles my mind. And I thought you might like to hear somebody say that we want more and we know that we have to pay for it. Don't get me wrong, I'm not telling you to raise taxes, I'm just telling you to do what you have to do to give us what we want. Giving us what we want, better roads, more police service, more EMS service, better health care, and better paying jobs. And this leads me to tell you that I think it's right to back GBIC on the proposed industrial park on Farm Road 511. I served on the P&Z for 12 years, and the number one issue was zoning that would meet the needs of large industry. It's one thing to identify needs, it's another to plan to meet those needs and then deliver based on the plan. It's time that we slow down building houses and start building jobs. Jobs that pay $30,000, $40,000, $50,000 a year so people can afford homes. Retail and ecotourism are faring well in Brownsville, but those jobs only pay enough for beans, rice, and tortillas. We need to provide meat, not Big Macs. So step up to the plate, do what you have to do to get jobs done. You will only earn our respect by doing the right thing. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. King. Thanks, sir. We have now uh, Mr. Joel Garza, please. Joel Garza. Okay, but what you want to speak on that item, do you not? For or against, I don't know. You're against it, okay. Well, you can come forward and speak if you like. 
You signed up to speak, so you're allowed three minutes. My name is excuse, my name is Joel Garza. I work with community development, uh, mayors and city commissioners. The again, the item that I'm speaking on is item number ten uh, on the public hearing that you have. Uh, I work again for community city uh, community development corporation. Our mission has been to provide affordable housing uh, for the citizens of Brownsville, and I am. Uh, talking uh, against the uh, ordinance that you have uh, in, in, in front of you uh, in trying to uh, provide uh, the parks uh, here for the uh, city of Brownsville. For the kids. It is a good idea, but my question is, who are we putting the burden on uh, for these developments? Uh, the whole city of Brownsville will be uh, taking advantage of having these parks uh, by implicating this particular ordinance uh, you're asking the, for actually just the future property owners and future homeowners uh, that are going to be purchasing in these new subdivisions uh, to burden the price of uh, these parts of these developments uh, how <coughs> is by placing that burden up on uh, the developer and increasing the price of their properties when they uh, come up for sale. Uh, the city at this point has uh, to maintain the upkeep of the existing uh, parks as they exist. Uh, they also carry the liability and will carry the liability for additional properties that they will be uh, uh, acquiring within the city and within the ETJ. And the qu other question would be who would be responsible for maintaining properties that are not inside the city but within the ETJ of the city of Brownsville which I mean is the city is going to be responsible for maintaining these properties uh, have you all considered uh, other type of funding for parks themselves uh, such as grants uh, or bonds just in closing uh, five years ago the city accepted a partially developed uh, park within a subdivision uh, there's still room for expansion in this particular area. Uh, this park has been less than 50% developed. Uh, the area has been cleared. It, it's ready for this development, but yet no recreational equipment has been implemented into this particular area. Uh, what I am requesting is uh, utilize the existing properties that you already have uh, control of and finish up developing the parts that we, yes, we uh, greatly need. But again, uh, it's requesting that you use the existing properties that you already have acquired. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the next one, uh, City Secretary. Mr. Robert Odesti. Mayor and Commissioners. I thought I was not going to come up here because only five people can come up here. And uh, I'll stress that again. Why is this city now denying anyone to voice their opinions? This is not government. The city of Brownsville has gone down the drain. <clears throat> and I wasn't coming here for this, but you keep saying those things. Uh, Mr. Odesti, I would like for you, you to stick to the you. subject I'm of quit attacking you, this commission, okay? I'm addressing you, sir. You always address, say address Address the topic you want to address. We follow rules here. We have rules to follow. We have a meeting to conduct, and this meeting is not going to evolve around you, okay? Understand that. It does not evolve around your needs. It evolves around this community, and the rules are 15 minutes for public comments, 3 minutes per person. I was kind enough to allow it more but we're going to go by the rules. So you're wasting your three minutes. So get on with it. Well, I'm very happy that you're, you're afraid of me, sir. And if I'm you're afraid, afraid of me, then afraid. you're afraid of all the people of Brownsville. And that's what's going on here. And no one should be afraid of you or myself. So you should never be afraid of me. I I stick to the rules, time. sir. You got three minutes to speak oh, and address you. this commission. And do not attack this commission. Stick the comment you want to. Your opinion on what? I'm not attacking anybody, sir. You're the one that's making the rules. 
number one. Thank you for laughing. Uh, number one, I wanted to build a home in Brownsville. I'm a single person. Problem is, I was given a hard time by the city inspectors. Great hard time. They gave me all kinds of problems. Like, first of all, you cannot build your own home. Okay? They said, you need a windstorm certification. And I asked, how much? They said, they didn't care. They wouldn't help me. They said, $2,000 to get a wind storm certification. I said, I'm going to build my house on piers. I said, you won't be allowed to. And this is the kind of attitude that the city inspectors were giving me a hard time. I had to go outside the city of Brownsville to get that windstorm. And what was the guarantee of the windstorm? The engineer told me nothing. The hurricane can still destroy your entire house. The, Mr. Governor Perry, because of the Katrina effect, well, we cannot say that Brownsville is the same as New Orleans. If you've never been to New Orleans, it's below 10 feet of sea level. Brownsville is above 10 feet of sea level. There's a big difference, okay? But guess what? I work hard, I got the papers. It took a little pushing and shoving down at the inspectors, but they gave me permission. By the way, my house is only going to cost sixteen thousand dollars. Time's up, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Again, we have to go by the rules, and we're going to stick to the rules. Do we have time for another one, uh, City Secretary? Or is the fifteen minutes up? I believe um, the fifteen minutes are up, sir. The fifteen minutes well, are up. Let me. I have a. I have a question, Mayor. Uh, this is uh, not time for that. For clarification, and Jim. The fifteen minutes are up. For clarification here. I need to ask you a question here for clarification on this comment period. Yes, okay, go ahead. The comment period, is it a total of 15 minutes? Because what I read, it says three minutes per speaker. I preside over the meeting. I allowed it 15 man. minutes. I'm just asking you. And my other question is, people are supposed to speak during the public comment period for items that are not for public hearing. Like the gentleman that spoke before on the parks, um, he should be allowed to speak on item 10, not to address the commission. If I read it correctly. It says a public comment form is designated for speakers to address the commission on a subject that is not a public hearing. I believe that's the intended purpose for it. I just want some clarification because I'm <coughs> confused here. Okay, let's go on. No, no. Let's, stick to, let's stick to the agenda. The, the, uh, the, city, the city attorney, that's why we have a city attorney. The uh, t uh, time allowed is 15 minutes, three minutes per person. And the commissioner's right, not on public hearing actions, but he, the gentleman wanted okay. to uh, mention something on there, and he sh the city attorney should have stopped it right there. Uh, thank you, Mr. Reese. Appreciate it. And if you like, I can talk to you afterwards, okay? Thank you. Okay, let's go on to the uh, presentations. Item number one, presentations, Brownsville <coughs> Museum of Fine Arts. Thank you very much for abiding by the rules, Mr. Reese. Okay, this is the Brownsville uh, Museum of Fine Arts. Okay, you have uh, 15 minutes, okay. Thank you, thank you everyone. Thank you for receiving us tonight and putting us on the agenda. I wanna first thank the city for everything the city does for us and has done. We were able to open a beautiful, beautiful building as you've seen, 17,000 square foot building with your help, $1.4 million from the 4B board and we opened almost a year ago. We'll have our celebration, our first anniversary in October. We want to show you a few things that we've done over the years, and we want to uh, show you why we're here asking, again, for more funding. We're doing a lot. We're in a very large place doing a lot more things than we did in our 70 years of past, and so uh, we'd like some more assistance, ask you for some more assistance in doing that. And Jennifer Kahn, Dr. Jennifer Kahn is our curator, and she's going to present <coughs> this PowerPoint, and then we'll be glad to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. This is a short presentation, gives me an opportunity to tell you about the many things that we've done over the last 11 months. Some of you have already seen this presentation, um, so I've made it a little bit shorter, and I hope that there will be questions afterwards about our plans for the future. Our mission statement emphasizes art education and the cultural enrichment of the community. Not only do we exhibit works of art, but we also educate children and adults. We encourage and develop the appreciation and advancement of art throughout the community. 
Many of you know that we were founded over 70 years ago by a small group of amateur artists, which eventually became known as the Brownsville Art League. Our permanent collection was slowly acquired over the last 70 years, has now grown to over 320 paintings, photographs, prints, and drawings. This is a very important collection regionally. They're mostly South Texas and North Mexico artists, and they give us a chance to look at the cross-border uh, culture exchange of ideas that has gone on in Brownsville for many decades. The Art League officially changed its name to the Brownsville Museum of Fine Art in 2001. We have an active board of directors, which you see on the left, and we have a very dedicated and passionate staff. Unfortunately, because of our budget situation, the education staff, with the exception of one person, has been let go. We have decreased the hours of operation for the museum. We are now no longer open on Sunday, although we are still open free to the public on Wednesday evenings from 5 to 8. Um, the full-time staff is now part-time and has taken a pay cut. I say these things only to explain to you how dire our situation is and that we are doing everything we can to run a tight ship, but we do need help. Our executive director, Carol DeMoss, has extensive experience in nonprofit administration. Our assistant director, Renata Laura, has a background in technology and education. And I have been a curator, a museum curator, for over 20 years, came to Brownsville a year ago, and was delighted to find a new museum building in the heart of the Midi Cultural District. Our new facility, which opened on October 20th of last year, is a large space that allows us to do a variety of activities. Based on conversations I've had with many people in the city, based on editorials in the paper on Sunday, I felt that we needed to address again the question of why a city should fund the arts. Most United States cities contribute significantly to the operating expenses of their art museums. Why? Art museums encourage tourism and economic growth and provide a cultural education that the public schools are no longer able to offer. Those vital critical thinking skills that make our young people think outside the box as individuals and as citizens of our community. On average, local art agencies in Texas received 54% of their operating budget through hotel occupancy taxes. And then I have a brief list of some of the museums in the Valley, primarily art museums, so that you can see the kind of allocations, both from hotel motel taxes and from general funds. Um, and this, we, we polled these museums, called them, and asked them about contributions. Um, not surprisingly, you'll see IMAS at the top of the list, but unfortunately, you will see the Brownsville Museum of Fine Art at the bottom of the list. The museum, as you know, is located across the street from the zoo on the linear park, hike, and bike trail, a fantastic location. It is the only organization of its kind dedicated to the fine arts in the valley. We do extensive children's art education, not only in the museum, but also in the classroom. We hold an annual student international art show where 500 to 1,000 works are exhibited from all over the world. This has been going on for 36 years. We have a children's gallery dedicated to art activities and children's art. And last year we served over 4,000 at-risk students through our cultural programs. We also have a program at the Cummings Middle School, the Southmost Library Art Program, and our Saturday art classes. Here are some pictures from our Southmost Library Art to Grow program. It's free to the public, four days a week. We hold several events for the Brownsville School District. The 36th annual high school art exhibition included hundreds of fantastic works. This was judged by professionals and the students expressed great pride in having their work exhibited in the city's museum. Then we also offer adult art education. We have all sorts of classes, sketching, painting, drawing. Um, the, we have an active group of artists um, who uh, visit each other's studios, give lectures, and teach. And then we have our exhibition program, which is my primary responsibility. We host the opening event for the Brownsville International Birding and Nature Festival, which allows us to showcase the best birding and nature artists of the valley. 
we held an exhibition of the Mexican-American artist Luis Jimenez which got a great response, particularly from high school students who were really able to connect and appreciate the fact that Jimenez talked about the culture, the barrio culture that he grew up with um, and became very famous for it. Our most recent exhibition that just closed was the work by local photographer Fred Ragland. We also have special events, concerts. We had uh, a wonderful style show, a fundraiser for the museum. A uh, Spanish guitarist from Real U Yale University performed for a group of Itoria elementary students. And then we have our public art programs, murals, uh, public sculpture, and our Art on Wheels, which was organized with support of the city of Brownsville, the bus, and BISD with our assistant director, Renata Lara. So if you see uh, the bus shelters with art in them, see if you ride the bus, you'll see children and adults art uh, traveling around the city. So here is a list of what we have done so far in since October 2006. We have been quite busy. We hope to continue being busy, but we need to do that um, with a staff that's able to work full time and we're able to keep the doors open. So what makes us any different than the other museums here in Brownsville? One, we're 75 years old. We have a beautiful permanent art collection. We have extensive educational programs for children throughout the Rio Grande Valley, a beautiful state-of-the-art facility, an uh, open floor plan that allows us to do a wide variety of programs, a highly skilled management team, um, I didn't write that, uh, a long tenured staff, a record for attracting outside grants, and an active board of directors with a lot of experience. So what are people saying about our museum? Gilbert Salinas from BEDC has pointed out how important culture is to attracting businesses because of the quality of life advantages that an art museum can bring. Students, I had a great conversation with some high school students about Luis Jimenez and this girl wrote us a thank you note and the last sentence was, is key to me, I hope to be one of them too. Ambitions based on what she saw in our art museum. Teachers, uh, Marsha Betancourt, the new supervisor of visual arts, was very impressed with a presentation we gave and in-service we did for the BISD art teachers. The police department, Sergeant Mary Rodriguez thanked us for what we do for kids, uh, providing them an alternative to some of the more negative behaviors they might be drawn to. We have a whole range of upcoming activities. Right now we have a beautiful teapot exhibition, the first of its kind to come to Brownsville. This is a nationally touring exhibition which started in New York City, will travel throughout the country ending in California. So it's very unusual that South Texas and Brownsville was able to be on that itinerary and it's our new facility that allows us to bring this to the people of Brownsville. As part of that exhibition, we asked artists to donate works, which we then auctioned as a fundraiser. We had an amazing response, beautiful artwork from artists all over the valley, several of whom had never even been in the museum but wanted to support our efforts. We have up right now an exhibition from our permanent collection of seascapes. Then we will be conducting an exchange with uh, Ima Culta in Matamoros. Uh, we'll be hosting an exhibition of Brownsville artists in the Albertina Gallery next month. Our major event of the year will be a, a celebration of our one year anniversary and we will be showcasing the local collection of Dr. Romeo and Linda Montalvo, a fantastic world-class collection of Latin American art. Next will be work by the nature artist Tony Bennett in January. Then we'll be hosting the Amigos Artistas annual exhibition with the work of Don Breeden. And then we hope if we can gather the resources to do a retrospective of the work of Jose Salazar, a Mexican artist who spent a great deal of time in the valley. So to conclude, what makes the difference for Brownsville, for the quality of life, for the education of children, is culture and the arts and we have given this presentation and come again to speak to you to stress the importance of what we do and hope that you will see the value in our programming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 
I, we have a couple of board members in the group, and we have some other supporters. We have uh, Tensha Sloss, who you all know. She's been with us from the very beginning, and we'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Does this body have any questions? I have a question. Yes, Commissioner. Bottom line is, if we don't help you today with this, we these funds, what's going to happen Even to the Medi Cultural District, to the Brownsville Museum of Fine Arts, and the things around it? What happens? Well, uh, we are functioning now only because our group it has very, they're very passionate about what we do, and they've all agreed to take a pay cut. Um, I don't know how many people you could find out there in the world, but our whole group unanimously took a pay cut so we could keep working and keep the doors open. For how long? Until we can remedy the situation or until we close the doors. Which is what? what you have a timeline for that? Uh, Based on your budget? Based on our budget, we just had a fundraiser Thursday night, and we were lucky enough to bring in eleven thousand uh, dollars. So we're going month by month, actually, month by month. So we're intending to be open till Christmas. We're intending to be open forever. But your budget only allows till Christmas. Right. Okay. Um, and a lot of the people you see out there supporting us tonight are volunteers, and they work more than 40-hour weeks at the museum. I think it's important uh, to point out that they have a mortgage with IBC mm -hmm. for $995,000. And uh, an asset like this, a brownfield, should not be from hand to mouth. It, sh it should not. I think we have a responsibility here to listen and, and, and respond to their needs. These people are taxpayers just like anybody else who are involved in this and the Camille Playhouse and the zoo and everything else. And they deserve to be heard. This is what they do and they need funding for it and they're asking us to fund them. And as taxpayers of this community and as an asset of the community, I think we have a responsibility to make sure those doors stay open and that this asset uh, is, is, is uh, uh, supported in every way we can to make it even more successful to where someday uh, they're they're not dependent upon the city. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, this is the poorest community in the nation. Everybody knows that. Mm -hmm. uh, there's not that many wealthy people here who are willing to donate money, or, or uh, uh, money is easy to, to be gotten. They did a fundraiser, which they um, collected 600000 right? Well, right? it was uh, the should? celebration from the collection of 600000 was our grand. You raised 600000 Yes. Uh -huh. uh, but uh, we put that with the 1.4 that 4B gave us. The 4B uh, gave you all to, okay. So they, they've done a lot. If you go, I went to the, uh, by the way, I went to the, uh, uh, the, the show there they had uh, last week. There was, it, was, it was fabulous. But if you go there and sit down with them and, and find out what it's all about, What's at stake, most importantly, what's at stake if these people have to close their doors? I think that would be sad for Brownsville. I, I think we can't afford to let that happen. Does anybody have any questions? How much did McCallan give to the fine arts over there? Or there uh, around 672000 Can you put that chart up? We're, 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 uh, McC the city's we're at now the, the bottom. The hotel motel tax uh, normally gives uh, a large amount to the arts. We're at the so bottom. the arts bringing in the tourism, mm -hmm. the economic development, and what it does for the children. <clears throat> now we receive the utilities, the city, you all pay our utilities, and uh, we receive 21250 from the budget. We are granted a grant from CDBG, which is 15000 and that's money from HUD that comes and is directed towards us. And that's what we do with our library program. It costs us much more than 15000 to put on, but our, one of our main goals are serving children. If we were to appropriate you $300,000, would you be willing to give up that CDBG money to go to someplace else? You bet. At this time, does the uh, when you count in the twenty-one thousand, does that include the funding from the city for the utilities? No, I just said the the twenty-one thousand two hundred fifty and the utilities. Y'all are gracious enough to give us, and then the fifteen thousand from CDBG. Mayor, can I ask you a question? Sure. Uh, your comment as to would they be willing to give up CDBG monies? Uh, fifteen thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Ben, I is that even?
you First of all, I don't think CDBG okay. funding should be going to this. In my opinion, I think it should be going for something else. We can get federal funding for any program. First, I'll take it. Uh, ben, go ahead. Um, in my opinion. Commissioner, we went through a whole series of BCAC meetings. You approved the project. Uh, HUD is reviewing the application currently, so it should be approved. Uh, we, we cannot amend the application right now. We amend applications after February. Uh, but if they do not wish to enter into an agreement, well, that money will, will remain with the city, which will be re reprogrammed in February. Um, but, but, I mean, it's, it's, the, it's the organization's prerogative either to, to sign the agreement or not sign the agreement. Uh, it's up to them, and it's up to you. I mean, you went through, uh, people went through a lot of citizens' comments and, and public hearings. Uh, you render a decision to, to approve the plan as is. We cannot go to HUD right now and amend it. No, of course not. We write a lot of grants. We go to a lot of agencies for funding. We've been very well supported by the community. Right now with this mortgage that we're paying, where all of our attention is at that, and so that's limiting us bringing in monies from other places. It's the hand to mouth that you described perfectly is the situation we're in. Thank you. And I recommend everybody to go see the teapot exhibit. It's, it's real good. Anybody else have any questions? And the Medicultural the District meeting next Monday is at our place. I hope everybody will join us. Thank you. Hey, there's a lot of developers out there. So go get a contribution before they leave. Okay. <laughs> Commissioner, <laughs> let's stick to the subject. Any, anybody else have any questions? Commissioner? Not at this time. Thank Friday? you. No. Anybody Thank you very much. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank let's you. give him a hand. Good job. <laughs> Thank you. I advise you all to stick around because we're going to be talking about y'all during the budget process. And uh, the Camille Playhouse, I will let you come in through the uh, presentation of the, of the budget because you were left out for some reason. It was done uh, inadvertently. It wasn't, it wasn't done purposely. Okay, let's have an a employee of the month. Um, Charlie Mad uh, Kabler. Mayor, members of the commission, please help me welcome our employee of the month for September, Gabriel Zuniga. works for the health department uh, under the uh, supervision of uh, Josh Amidas and his immediate supervisor, uh, Joe Hinojosa. He uh, has been working with us only a short period of time, but uh, one of the main reasons we hired him was to uh, uh, evaluate our risacas and help us beautify and clean and uh, find ways of uh, leading our crews in, in, in that effort. He has done a fantastic job. Uh, for example, he helped, he helped uh, organize the uh, cleanup at the Resacas at the uh, VICC, which, which are now looking very nice. Uh, he is currently working on the, on the west side uh, systems of the Resacas, and he has also helped us find ways of uh, repairing and, and uh, getting our aerators back to uh, work in order without us having to send them off and, and go through high expenses. So he's done a wonderful job, and uh, we congratulate him. Congratulate him on, on, on behalf of our city staff, Absolutely. Mayor and the City Commission. Uh, he is employed the month of September. He is eligible for Employee of the Year Award in, uh, at our banquet in December. Of course, he gets our plaque in recognition of our outstanding services rendered to the City of Brownsville for the month of September. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, our honorary pin and cap, which he needs because he always works out in the sun. <laughs> Congratulations, Mr. Sumia. Thank you for your commitment. Muchas gracias a todos. No, gracias a usted por ser un buen empleado. Muy amable, gracias. Y felicidades. Um, we have a proclamation, uh, assisted living. Please, could you, City Secretary, read that? Is there anybody here to receive that? National Assisted Living Week. Table it. You want to read it? I'll read it for you. Go ahead. A proclamation of the City Commission of Brownsville, Texas, designating September 9th through September 15th, 2007, as National Assisted Living Week in our city. Whereas the number of elderly and disabled Americans are dramatically increasing, and whereas assisted living is a long-term care service that fosters choice, dignity, independence, and autonomy in our elderly nationwide, and whereas the National Center of Assisted Living proudly sponsors National Assisted Living Week 2007 in collaboration with American Association of Homes and Services for the Aging and the Assisted Living Federation of America, 
and whereas the theme of National Assisted Living Week 2007 is Legacies of Love, which provides us the opportunity to pass the, agent, the legacies of our elders' lives down through, our genera through the generations. Now, therefore, we, the members of the City Commission of the City of Brownsville, Texas, by virtue of the authority vested by the charter of said city, do hereby designate September 9th through, through September, 7, September 15th, 2007, as National Assisted Living Week in the City of Brownsville, and further urge all our citizens to visit friends and loved ones who reside at the Meadows Assisted Living Facility <coughs> and to learn more about assisted living services and how they benefit our community. Done this the, twel the 12th day of September uh, 12th of uh, 2007, signed by Mayor Pat Almada and the City Commission. This proclamation is to be presented on September the 12th. Thank you, Sir Secretary. Thank you. you. Just make sure they get it, okay? Yes, sir. Thank you. Now, um, as presiding officer uh, in conducting these meetings, I have the prerogative to uh, either take the items in the order they're, they're presented or skip around and sometimes I will skip around for a reason there's a reason behind it I have that prerogative and I will exercise that prerogative when I think it's it suits best the interest of the individual that's here that maybe has to leave or for whatever reason there's a reason why I'm doing it um, and that is uh, uh, my authority to do that based on that I'm going to move up item number 15 okay uh, City Secretary, would you please uh, move up item 15? Item 15, consideration and action on resolution number 2007-049 in support of the Hands Across El Rio meeting to be held on September 8th, 2007 at the Gateway International Bridge. Okay. Uh, are those people here, are the Hands Across uh, the Rio? Uh, and uh, uh, t uh, Tony Savaleta, would you please come forward? Thank you, Doctor. Uh, Mayor, members of the City Commission, I, <clears throat> I honor you and, and, and thank you for your service to our community. Uh, you, you already heard from uh, one organization, one of our coalition uh, members that was here earlier. Uh, they're one of the, mem the, the numerous uh, members organizations in this, uh, this event that is going to take place here in Brownsville on Saturday the 8th at 1 p.m. at the Gateway International Bridge and then on Sunday at Boca Chica Beach at the mouth of the river. This is, I mean, I, and I've already seen here, I mean, I've really enjoyed your meeting and I've seen so many metaphors for the reason that there should not be a wall or a fence or whatever it will be built between our two uh, great nations and between our peoples. And one of the art exhibits, if you notice, said, uh, uh, built, uh, t uh, paraphrasing, um, destroying barriers or taking down barriers, not putting up barriers through art, and that, that, that's an amazing thing. Um, the, the, this uh, Hands Across El Rio event that will take place on Saturday is not about uh, immigration, legal or illegal, whether it should be or shouldn't be. It's not about uh, national security. We all support national security. We need to have uh, secure borders. What this is about is our uh, communities, binational communities, from El Paso to Brown, from El Paso Juarez to Brownsville Matamoros, sending a message to our nation's capitals and letting them know that there's there must be other ways to do to keep our border safe. For example, than building, uh, putting down concrete or fencing. For example, so far we have been spared but we will not always be spared a direct hit of a category five hurricane on our community only by the grace of god that has not happened the levees in our community just to the east and the south of downtown uh, have not been uh, repaired in 40 50 years and the hit the of uh, a direct hurricane on our area will send the waters over those levees we all know that we don't like to think about it but it will happen the PUB and John Bruziak is, he, is here, has been advocating for a weird dam down river for years since I was on the city commission. <laughs> and we've not been able to receive federal funding or attention for that. A weird dam would not only conserve and preserve water that we desperately need in our community. We haven't needed it this summer, but we sure will need it in the future. But it will also back up the level of the river and so thereby na uh, for many, many miles upriver and thereby creating a more formidable national natural boundary without concrete and cement and, and, and fencing. So the the hands across and I know every I know everybody knows that. 
the Hands Across El Rio event will be a peaceful, symbolic gesture in our community in which, and I invite you all to walk out on the bridge and to hold hands. Our Mexican uh, neighbors will be doing the same. The kayakers will be coming down the, the river and we will hold hands symbolically and then there'll be a short rally at another location after that. So I, I thank you and I want to thank um, 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 City Attorney Goza for doing um, a marvelous job without much uh, time to do it in, the, in this procl proclamation. I uh, appreciate that very much. And to uh, Public Information Officer Bill Young, to the Mayor, the Commissioners, City Secretary, and everybody else for supporting this effort. Last week, this, this same sort of thing was done in the city of uh, uh, Laredo. Uh, the week before that in Del Rio, in Eagle Pass, and in, and in uh, El Paso. So we're, we're in good company here in the, in the city of Brownsville. I thank you very much for the... Thank you, Mr. Saleta. And for the record, would you read the resolution, uh, City Secretary, please? Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Resolution number 2007-049. A resolution recognizing the importance of the Hands Across El Rio Coalition as a commemoration of our shared heritage and ongoing commitment to the future development of our common interests and economic prosperity. Whereas the communities of Brownsville, Texas and Matamoros, Mexico coexist and are intricately connected in many ways, including geographically, socially, economically, and culturally, and whereas the survival and well-being of each community is inextricably tied one to the other, and whereas there exists within both communities many dedicated individuals and entities, both public and private, that strive for even greater degrees of cooperation and open sharing of ideas, resources, and cultural affairs, and whereas the City of Brownsville, Texas, acting by and through the City Commission of the City of Brownsville, does hereby wish to commemorate and recognize this important group of individuals and select entities that support our common good, and whereas the communities of Matamoros and Brownsville wish to pledge their ongoing and everlasting commitment to the future development and coexistence of our shared region, and whereas the communities of Matamoros and Brownsville, acting by and through their respected, respective elected officials, wish to hereby express their opposition to any further impediment to our open and shared common existence, and whereas our community's best interests lie not in further separation or division, but in increased awareness and in, co and in cooperation between our sister cities, the City of Brownsville, Texas does hereby recognize and pass this resolution in support of the Hands Across El Rio Coalition and of their efforts to prevent further obstruction, whether through physical barriers or social restrictions. The City Commission of the City of Brownsville, acting pursuant to the powers given them by the City Charter and the Constitution of the State of Texas, hereby resolves to provide all possible support to the Hands Across El Rio Coalition and does hereby resolve to recognize and express gratitude and support for all of the individuals and in entities who have joined peacefully together in a spirit of unity and faith to, to oppose the installation of any barricades or physical obstructions designed to further separate our shared community. Signed by the Mayor Pat Almada. Thank you, Doctor. Yeah, appreciate it. Very kind and genteel and a, and a wonderful job. Uh, Jim, I appreciate it very, Thank very you. much. Uh, I'm, I'm here as an accident uh, because um, the, uh, one of our staff members was out of town, so I got to sen uh, sent to attend a meeting in Harlingen when they first announced what they were, were going to do, and uh, it, it's gone on from there. So thank you so thank you. Very much. I hope to see you on Saturday afternoon. Thank you, and I hope uh, people will join me along with Dr. Savaleta. This is a very symbolic a gesture opposing the wall. Uh, people in Washington and people in the interior of the United States have no idea how this wall can adversely impact us. And it's important, I think, to show a symbolic effort uh, that we are against this wall. This is our home, and we don't need a wall. We don't think a wall is going to deter immigration. It may slow it down, but it's not going to deter it. And there's better alternatives to a wall like the, the Weir Dam, which will raise the, the water level from 12 feet to 26 feet and back it up 42 miles and widen the river, which can be patrolled by boats instead of putting the wall. Uh, with that, I, you know, I encourage everybody to uh, show up on September uh, 8th at 1 p.m. at the Gateway International Bridge and write your congressman, senator. Let them know that you oppose the wall. Uh, I'm going to Mexico City July 13th, I think, on this to work with the Mexicans to support the we're, we're, uh, uh 
project. Hopefully, we can get that online as a, uh, uh, on their behalf. They don't want to see the wall either. So it looks like they're, they're supporting this uh, effort, and we hope we can make it happen uh, based on the circumstances that are occurring right now <laughs> with the proposal to build a wall that I think can only uh, hurt us, not help us. Thank you, Dr. Hey, again. You I, just, I just want to say I, I agree with your comments, Mayor, <coughs> and I want to urge everyone to please contact your federal elected officials. You can uh, contact them at www.senate.gov or www.house.gov. So I urge you to please contact them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, number three. Approve, so I to support this uh, re resolution. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Okay, let's go to item number three, please. Item three, consent agenda items number A through E. Would approve. I had, a, okay. I had a real quick question, just it, probably legal it answer for clarification on consent agenda, uh, agenda items C, D, and E. Uh, City Attorney. What is your question, Commissioner? City Attorney. Yes, sir. I know that this is probably more ceremonial, and, and actually, from my understanding from Evaristo Gomez, this is uh, probably a, an insignificant charge, w will, uh, the way it will affect the city. But let's say our major developers in town are Vietnam veterans or World War II veterans. Does this also take into account and I, I, I do not know but just as an example because he comes to mind Mr. Terry Ray if Mr. Terry Ray is a, is a veteran of the Vietnam War or of such any other conflict anybody in the military obviously ends up being uh, some sort of a veteran does that put them in quali in, in to qualify for these I know sir they and Commissioner go, Comedy, go ahead go ahead probably more familiar with the exact terms of it but <coughs> it was designed only to uh, give breaks to disabled veterans, people who had, who uh, had uh, a medical disability as a result of having served in the armed forces. And so it wouldn't apply across the boards to anyone who was a veteran. Ben, would you like to address this issue? You addressed it, uh, I think, last time, did you not? No. no. Who was it that addressed it? Mr. Gomez. Uh, Go okay, Mr. Gomez. May, okay. may if I may, <coughs> what do you call it? Uh, Sorry, Mr. Camarillo. Put the, uh, put the resolution together with Mr. Chelsea and, uh, and Aranda Bolivar. This was specifically for disabled vets, and one of the safeguards we felt they needed to be in place is that if, if it's in order for a disabled vet to take part in, in the benefits, the cost savings, they need to be at least 80% owner of the business, as, you know, as opposed to a developer coming in and saying, well, I'm going to hire a disabled vet, I'm going to give you 1% or 2% of the company so, you can, so we can you know, take a part of the benefits. Well, it can't work that way. They have to be at least 80% ownership. But it was specifically for disabled vets, and they'd have to provide the documentation from the federal government. There's a form, um, I, don't know, I don't know it off the top of my head, but a form we need to produce that says they were X percentage uh, disabled but military vets. Uh, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Longoria, Mr. Gamis ran the numbers. Uh, would you, Commissioner Longoria was not here last time, so could you please uh, run the uh, numbers? Commissioner down? Longoria, we don't have any uh, database on how many disabled veterans we, d uh, we do have in our roster, but uh, it is very, very minimal that uh, there are uh, disabled veterans. They need to show proof, and they need to own 80% of the uh, company. Any other questions? No, sir. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion. Who made the motion? I Commissioner Sorry. Camarillo, second by Commissioner Cisneros. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Uh, item um, four. Item four, public hearing and action on first reading of protested ordinance number 235-2007-021-S to allow a specific use with safeguards for medium industrial power plant substation on a general retail 4C classification for, portion, for a portion of Block 12 of Amelia subdivision located near Expressway 7783 and Amelia Lane. Honorable Mayor and City Commission, uh, this case was heard on July the 17th uh, and this is a, a substation for AEP CPNL uh, located in that shaded uh, red area. Uh, right adjacent to our sports park. Uh, at this, at the last public hearing, there were people uh, against this. Uh, it was approved by the Planning and Zoning Commission. 
uh, but you all had some questions uh, that you were going to resolve with, with uh, AEP. Um, both the applicant and the surrounding neighbors are here. Uh, it is a continued public hearing, or is a public hearing. May I have two questions for uh, AEP? Go ahead. Please introduce we yourself. Hi, I'm Jerry Don Wilson with American Electric Power from Westlaco. Okay. I'm the Community Affairs Manager. Commissioner Cody, you had a thank question? You. Yes, sir. Thank you for being here. Jerry, we, you and I met uh, about two weeks ago. Yes, sir. Three. And uh, I don't know if I asked you this at that time, but one of the questions I have now is PUB has an existing plant a little bit further down property that I'm not sure if you all have considered or looked or you know considered prior to purchasing the property you, you own now. Uh, was that ever an option, building this plant right next door to PUB? Is that your property? Is that vacant property? Is it commercial? Well, first thing, I have no idea where the PUB substation is located in that area. Uh, I, I just know the area that we need in that, in Omito, we need that stub substation within that area real close to that transmission line and uh, to cover the Omito and also uh, Military Highway and Rancho Viejo. Okay. It'd be hard to move that around, you know, several miles or or two miles or a mile, but the location that we have is very much in need in that area. Was that surrounding that the surrounding that area, which is I would I guess I would say east of your property or AEP's property, was that ever looked at considered before you purchased this property? I just since you've got that an property, existing plant. Let me uh, let me ask John Garcia here, our, our real estate agent. He can tell you more about that than I can. I understand. Commissioners, Mayor, my name is John Garcia, and I'm a senior real estate agent for AEP. To answer your question, yes, sir, we did, but the existing transmission line that AEP currently owns doesn't go that far east. It goes almost to the existing PUB substation. I did look at that, that, that road that runs through there is called Emilia, Le old, old Allison Road, I'm sorry. But we did look at some property in that area. Uh, I couldn't get a, a big chunk of property enough to be construct a substation site. That was one hinder. The other hinder was the PUB line that runs through there. We don't have an agreement to be able to uh, tie into their uh, distribution line and we needed transmission space. Aesthetically, more, more than happy to accommodate you to pay the fee. <laughs> <laughs> Aesthetically, for the uh, for the actual structure, I noticed you're going to have the landscaping. But I mean, have you all ever considered? You know, right next door, we're going to have our our sports park. How that might look to the public, and once it's all said and done, have you looked at aesthetically what what measures are in place to ensure that people don't see this huge, you know, towering deal? A absolutely, we work with Delina Barrera. Met with her. Uh, got her approvals after we we kind of showed her the layout of what we were looking at of course we don't want to be an eyesore as well we want to be good the community good neighbors and working with the forestry department for PUB and our some external contractors that we looked at look at a, a good design so that we can isolate the area so it's not a, an eyesore and has has she seen that uh, our she, park staff I, her. and our park staff I guess the people that are y yes sir the, the guy's name is uh, uh, is it Gary? Uh, Ed, Ed, Ed Capel. Capel. I'm sorry. Ed Capel. Yes, sir. And he has worked with her as well. That's our forester. Yes. Yeah. Any other questions? Um, I had a question. I, think, I guess my concern was uh, when I talked to you about the landscaping, make sure that it wasn't <coughs> an eyesore. And I think you've, you've answered that. And I spoke with Ben about that. My second question, Ben, what we were talking about was uh, putting it um, as far away from the private yes. property owners. Yes, Commissioner, the PNZ, uh, they, AEP had proposed it, uh, I guess, to, to the west here on the, uh, on the, uh, on the, on the site plan. Mm -hmm. The PNZ uh, voted to put it right in the center. Uh -huh. uh, it is a six-acre tract to which they will only be utilizing about 1.5 for their, for their substation. So, so, so there's some area, there will be area on both sides, but but AP uh, has bought the six-acre site, and anywhere in there that you feel is feasible or better for the community, uh, they have agreed to to locate that substation. Okay. And this is in the center, Ben. Right now, yes. The way PNZ approved, it's not in the center now, but the way PNZ approved it, it has to be in the center. Go. Cool. I want to ensure that in the in this plan, what we're going to vote on is it's in the center. Yes, with your comments as well, Commissioner. Compared uh, to before, it was abutting the. 
the it property a, owner, yeah, now they mitigated it by putting it in the center there. Green areas on both sides. Uh, and also, uh, let me advise you that, that this is a uh, super majority vote. You do have a protested petition by 20% of the surrounding property owners. So what that means is that you need uh, uh, six out of the seven positive votes to override the, the petition. Is this a specific use? Correct. Yes, Commissioner. There's specific use with safeguards. That means that there's more landscaping uh, around the area. They work. We did work with the, our forester, Mr. Capel, uh, and there's <coughs> more plantage, more vegetation required. Maintenance of the uh, of the vegetation is going to be c taken care of on, on a regular basis by AEP. That is correct. Uh, we have a forester that will continue to take a look at this. Any if other I'm questions? Could you refresh my memory as to what this is going to look like? Okay. <clears throat> There's some pictures here, but is this like a power plant? It's not going to look like that. No. It's not going to look like that, right? All right. <laughs> That's the interior side. Interior shot. Where is that? That's in Brownsville, right? Yeah. Where is that? That's 281. I believe that's, yeah, that's. <laughs> <laughs> with no landscaping, <laughs> no no gates, no. Okay. Okay. Right here is the location. If you'll just yeah, uh -huh. zoom that in a little. Uh, there you go. Right there. Now where we have all of the <laughs> scrubs and also we have uh, bougainvilleas, six foot wide mulched area right there where where it says in the substation site, which will be moved in the middle. Everything will stay the same. And that completely would be covered all the way around that substation. And there's going to be two fences there in, the, in that location. Chain link fence and then another chain link fence with a razor, I guess, wire. Barbed wire. Barbed wire, yes. If I may, um, <coughs> earlier you were talking about the areas that it was going to serve. Um, I guess my question is, did you bring anybody that can give us some more information as far as what areas of this community is it going to serve? You talked about Olmito, I think I heard Rancho Viejo, but as far as Brownsville, what areas of Brownsville is this going to assist? It's going to serve the northern part of Brownsville, the what what customers we have in that area, you know where the Walmart location is, there in Whataburger in that area, everything south, I mean north of there, going back towards Olmito and back towards Rancho Viejo. And how is this going to improve your service? How it's going to improve it is that it's going to give us another substation. It's going to give us some help, some reliability there that we really in dire need because of the growth in that area. Right now we are maxed out with Cavasa substation, which is located right out of Omito and Rancho Viejo between the two areas there. And uh, once we lose that substation, then we have to, of course, connect to other substations. <clears throat> and if we're at a time where we're at the hottest part of the day or a very cold day like it happened back in February, like I was trying to explain to you all last time, that uh, all the other substations were loaded down and we couldn't transfer all of our customers over to the other substations, to Los Fresnos and this, this will avoid also blackouts. Rangerville. This will avoid have, blackouts. Excuse me, Mayor. Uh, do you have any information on how this is going to improve capacity? Did you, you know, provide any of that information, or have, do you have any of that information with you? No, I don't. Okay, thank you. Okay, you might want to point out that at Sam's, like for instance, you service Sam's when the when the load is too too too, too uh, extreme, it shuts down, and Sam's is without electricity. Well, uh, the that area will, right there, this oh, will we, help you feed. We do that. not uh, serve Sam. PUB does. We no, only no, serve. You service it. You service it. Not Sam's. Yeah. Oh, they do Walmart. Okay, I'm sorry. And there was Walmart. Yeah. Okay, it'll help you be more reliable in providing the Absolutely. load that they need. Because we've had numerous, numerous outages in that area over and over. And we're trying to eliminate this problem completely. And this substation will take care of that need. And that was specific a problem during the last winter, correct? That's correct. Thank you. Any other questions? This is a public hearing. There's a gentleman that they <coughs> speak. Mr. Okay. One other comment. Uh, Mrs. Barrera wanted me to mention there is discussion of, of closing old Allison Road here on this side uh, where it tees off with Emilia Lane and we've worked with the adjoining, adjoining uh, landowner Mrs. Rubio to, to get, get 
uh, gather a, an easement to gain access into the into the property if if <coughs> old Allison Road is closed off. Okay, this is a public hearing. Please come forward, and then Mr. Reese. State your name, please. My name is Nicolas Vela, Mayor Commissioners. Um, just to let you know, my understanding that they're giving power to PUB to that substation. You guys are paying CPNL to get power to for, uh, for PUB. That's one. The other. PUB serves more than 80% to the city of Bronzo. And they're saying they're, we got Magic Valley and we got CPNL, which equals to 10% each of them. Why are they going to build it right next to my land, to the sports complex, when they can build it to Rancho Viejo, which they provide a lot of service to them, or, see, or the city of Los Fresnos? Why don't they go put it right next to a golf course at Rancho Viejo? Why right next to our uh, sport complex? What's your name? Nicolás Vela. Vera? Vela. Let me ask you, can I ask you something real quick? Yes, sir. How much is your land worth? My land, when I bought it, uh, I paid a hundred and, uh, a hundred and some thousand dollars. What it's worth right now, I really don't know. Let me ask you something real quick. Did they ever approach you to buy your land? Yes, they did. And how much did you want for it? I told them about three times as much because I don't want to sell. If they want to buy, they okay, got to so pay what I want to sell. interested in selling it. So they can put that exactly. Right. I mean, if, if I don't want to sell right you now. Get it? So now you oppose it? No, I don't want to sell it. Money you wanted, you would put it there, and you'd be happy and gone. Why not? I mean, anybody could have done that. Difference? Why are you fighting against it now? Because it's right next to my property. Sold it. I'm not. pretty sure, commissioners. I'm pretty sure that if it was right next to one of your properties, I mean, this wouldn't be happening, sir. Uh, Mr. Bell, let me tell you. If you go down Sixth uh, Street, where the zoo is, mm -hmm. there's a substation there. There's substations throughout. The but mainly their PUBs. I mean, the city grows around these areas, but they're much needed to provide a reliable service to their customers. Mm -hmm. They have to have it. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, like the gentleman pointed out, and I pointed out, uh, 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 not Sam's, but Walmart. They they have blackouts because they can't feed it. I understand. When the load is too big. Mm -hmm. Now the alternative is to buy you out. Mm -hmm at a market value reasonable price, but apparently you want above market value. Like I said, so the reason I gave him that price, because one of the things he said, if you don't sell me, your property is going to devaluate. And I can say it over and over and over again, because that's his correct words. And so I can say it in front of anybody. We have to balance, okay, the overall need, mm -hmm. okay? You're, you're one person, one family, and I understand your, your, I understand it, okay? Thank you, sir. And then you have, how many customers over here in this end? 6,000 customers. Mm -hmm. Now, it would be, I think, irresponsible of us just to think of one customer, of one, one family instead of the 6,000. You follow what I'm saying? I because understand. During, during winter, they need heat, okay? okay. They, they need the service, and they need to be reliable to where, it doesn't affect me, mm -hmm. as far as PUB. PUB is not affected, okay? Okay. Okay. Your name? Your name? It, the mic. Your name? Um, I, my name is Marina Buenrostro, and I'm speaking on behalf of my father-in-law, Juan Buenrostro. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to address you and the commissioners to tell you that it's not just one family living out there. It's many families. And it's also, we're um, now that the city park is going to be opening out there, we were looking forward to more of a residential type of environment for our kids, for our kids, his grandsons, um, which we're a big family, to be around, not to be facing a power plant all the time. Your name, please. Marina Buenrostro. Ms. Buenrostro. Um, how, many, how many families are here opposing this? How many families are here opposing this? There's two families opposing this? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Vela. Any other questions? Any other questions for the commission? Thank you. Okay. In our decision-making, each commissioner has got to go through the process of to weigh uh, what is best for the overall. You want to say something finally, uh, final statement? I just I just want to go ahead and think about it. I mean, 10%, they're the, what they provide to the to the uh, city of Brownsville. I understand. UB provides 80% of it. Why are they going to put it in our city right next to my property or right next to a sport complex? Like I said, why don't they move it down further to uh, north to uh, Los Fresnos or right next to a golf course to Rancho Viejo? But if he had, if he had uh, like the Commissioner Atkinson pointed out, mm -hmm. if they had given you the price that you wanted, you would be okay with it. He told me he wouldn't pay that much. That's why so, I said so I was giving I, the my The point price. is this, and I think the Commissioner made a good point. If you were satisfied, then 
you could care less about the other families. I guess anybody would, Mayor. No, we're talking money. about you. You would, you, Mr. Vela, would accept three times the value, regardless how it affected the other families. Well, of course, who wouldn't? Okay, well, that's you that's know, honest. And I just appreciate that. I'm just trying to be honest, you know, and well, I hope I everybody that. of you guys understand what we're Nothing going wrong through. Nothing wrong with that. And it's not going to be just me; it's everybody around. That's the American way, and I, I don't fault you for it one bit. They don't want to pay the price because they feel it's, it's it's too extremely high. Yeah, but remember what remember what the words that he says. You don't sell me. Your property is going to devaluate, and you so I mean, yeah, I know you understand the situation. You know what the lands are worth since being you know being an appraiser. I understand. Um, any other gentleman here, or oh, you spoke, Mr. Windrush? You, you, you spoke for your father. Move to close public hearing. We have a motion to close the public hearing. Uh, oh, Mr. Reese wanted to speak. Uh, Mr. Reese, please go forward. I'm sorry. Honorable Mayor, Commissioners, I just want to make sure that the gentleman. Uh, who represents Central Power and Light and uh, Mr. Bruziak. I understand that there's jurisdictions that are given to each electric company by the, by the uh, 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 Public <coughs> Utility Commission in Austin. Now, if this, if this property is in the jurisdiction of the uh, Central Power and Light, uh, they should have uh, requested permission from the Public Utility Commission number one and if they're going to exchange or between the PUB whatever that's completely out of out of line because that happened to where I live it used to be jurisdiction of the uh, of the central power and light and now it's a jurisdiction of the public utility board and and, and, I, and I'm up to my head with the electric bills you see so it's good that this gentleman is here addressing this matter because you know the big fish will always try to eat the little one do they have all their permits in order on their following regulations because the jurisdiction that is their central power and light jurisdiction over here is uh, PUB or whatever. We need to get the permits and everything in order before we even discuss the matter. Thank you. You want to address that? You have your permits. You're within compliance of the law and everything. You want to address that? Uh, AP. On the compliance of the law. Of what, what with, uh, He's referring to a dual certification yeah. where you're servicing the, those customers. You have that authority under the PUC. That's correct. Okay. In some areas, there. First thing I'd like to correct here is that we we are not Central Power and Light Company. We are AP. American Electric Power. We are a wires company only. That's it in a deregulated market. I just want to correct that though. Okay. But in some areas, we have triple certification. We have uh, Magic Valley Co-op. And we have uh, PUB and we have AEP. But you're in and compliance. With, I mean, yes, we are, absolutely. And, and uh, they wouldn't be here doing this if they weren't, I assure you. They couldn't get it done any other well, way. Let me ask you something. If PUB wanted to do this, would you, uh, Leandro, would you all be looking at the same area they were looking at to get it done? John? Depends up on the growth. I don't, I don't know what their needs were. Yeah, that's. That's on funny. the growth of the customers, the area that you have. Okay. May I have another question? Um, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Comedy. Uh, do you own the property? Not yet. So the owner is Dorina Rubio. So she's, she's, she's purchasing the property on your behalf. I guess well, if, if the deal goes through, then you'll officially purchase it from her? That's correct. So you all are not the owners? That's correct. <coughs> she, wants, she wants to make money too. <coughs> have you made an effort? Um, have you looked at the Rancho Viejo area? I'm sorry, what's that? Have you looked at the Rancho Viejo Mr. area? Garza's asked you a question. Commissioner Garza has asked you a question. Rancho Viejo area there? Yes. Well, have you looked at some, any line out there? Have you made an effort? I can answer that yeah, question. Yeah, and the answer to the Rancho Viejo, the answer to Los Fresnos, and, and another site in Brownsville, or, or I'm sorry, uh, not in Brownsville, outside of the ETJ of Brownsville, we're looking at those facilities now to enhance the uh, infrastructure. But that's for other uh, three additional sites besides okay. this one. Yes, for sir. other substations. But he was referring, instead of building there, have you looked at? Uh, why is it that you have your mind set on this? That's what you're asking. Yes, sir. Me, There's an existing there, there, because it's going to serve the load uh, for the current customers within that area. So There's strategically, you you feel that that's the, that's the, the optimum place to be at. Yes, sir. Okay. And what percent of Brownsville residents are going to benefit from this? I don't know the answer to well, just yeah. like, like I was telling you that uh, in that area, 
uh, north of Brownsville from uh, Walmart. I don't know the name of that road right there. Elton Lower. Okay, yeah. From there going north is what we have a lot of our customers in that area. We have a little over 6,000 customers. It's our ETJ. It's Brownsville's ETJ. Yes. But you got to understand the way this came about. AAP may have single, dual, or, or triple certification, and PB may be part of that certification or whatever. But when the city was originally cut out as to where the area would, the city would serve, uh, that was not part of it at that time. The city has grown around it and all that, but they have first dips, I guess, to that area right there. Yes. I move to close public hearing. Six okay. acres. Uh, we have a motion uh, to close public acres, hearing. How much is that worth? How much that six, six acres? How much, well, how much are you going to purchase it for? That, that I don't have that answer, John. That's confidential, isn't it? That's we that should numbers, be confidential. We talked about half a million or, you well, know. Well, that's confidential, I think. Well, how is that confidential? Mr. Vela disclosed the property. Pretty the close to fair market property. value. I'm sorry? Pretty close to fair market value. What's that, what's that value? What's that amount? Uh, that the area. Amount? Mr. Groza. You know, Mr. Vela. Want to interject here? He's, per I, he's permitted to disclose it, but you can't compel him to if it's no. something that's a confidential so, business. I think we should respect so the confidentiality question, so of the business. So my question is again, how much is you how much are you seeking to purchase it for those six acres? You don't have to answer that question. I, and I won't. Let me a answer this. The the uh, Mrs. Rubio is here present. If she wants to disclose how much she's receiving for the for the six point acre six point uh, oh one acres, that that's her. Okay. Well, well. I like I like to know how much is she willing to sell that property for. Well, let me ask you. So we're going to have a sport complex right there, isn't? I mean, all that area is for commercial. Aren't we going to get like stores, hotels further on? Maybe we're going to get that, and we're going to have a. Uh, power plant right next to it you think it'll work do you think it'll look nice instead of having stores hotels restaurants I mean that's soon to come because we're gonna have a sport complex and it's gonna be a huge complex why have something like that doesn't matter how much you dress it it's still gonna be a power plant but doesn't Mr. Vela you were willing to have it there if they paid the price so that's not an issue and that's fine I, we are, we've, we've understand mm -hmm. now Mrs. Rubio do you wanna uh, you don't have to uh, disclose if you don't want to if you want to you, you, you can but you do not have to remember that. Hi, my name is Dorina Rubio. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, if it makes a difference in your decision, you need to know. I just want to know. Three hundred ninety thousand for six acres, and originally AP approached me for a couple acres, and because they took into consideration the neighbors in the park, um, they approached me to add more land so they had more buffer around um, around the substation. Again, taking into consideration the neighbors in the park. So that's why it's, we're at six acres. It was Roger at two. Okay. We have a motion to close public hearing. Do we have a second? <coughs> a second by Mr. Longoria. A motion made by Mr. Ak Atkinson. All in favor to close? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Um, ben, uh, what is staff recommendation on this? Staff recommendation um, was to approve okay. the safeguards. Does it have to be a supermajority vote? And PNZ uh, voted uh, to approve as well. The supermajority is because there's the surrounding neighbors filed a protest petition. So to override that protest petition, you need a supermajority. Okay. I believe uh, Mr. Tarani cannot vote on I have this. a conflict. He represents... Okay, well, that's fine. Understood. He doesn't have to explain. Uh, I mean, he has a conflict. Mr. Atkinson wanted to bring it to the forefront. I was going to abstain, but now that he has... <laughs> That's fine. Just to let you know, because I'm wondering, it needs a supermajority vote, right? Okay. Okay. Do we have a motion to approve or deny after hearing all everybody on the sit on? We'll make a motion to approve uh, this ordinance number. Okay. Do we have a second? Uh, Commissioner Agus makes a motion to approve. Do we have a second? I so move. Okay, second by Commissioner Garza. All in favor? Aye. <coughs> aye. Aye. All opposed? How many how many voted aye? Raise your hands. Everybody. Two. Four. So you got it. Okay. So the motion carries you have a supermajority. Okay. Uh my, item five. Okay, uh, let's, let's hold back. I had a request 
Let's go to item 11, please. To move it forward. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Item 11. Public hearing and action on first reading of ordinance number 2007-983-BB regarding chapter 102 of the Code of Ordinances entitled Utilities and which provides for electric, water, and wastewater sanitary sewer service rates and charges and conditions of services, amending section 102-195 to reduce the monthly customer service charge for residential electric customers from $5.53 to $2.53, amending section 102-76 to reduce this penalty, the penalty for delinquent pa payment of utility bills from 10% to 5% and providing a severability clause and effective date. Uh, mayor, members of the commission, uh, this ordinance change was proposed by the mayor uh, at PUB uh, to help our customers uh, with their utility bills. Uh, this uh, ordinance change was approved by our board at our last meeting uh, unanimously. Uh, the PUB has adopted, a, uh, their, approved their budget at our last meeting. It's a balanced budget with these pr proposed reductions in revenue, so there'll be uh, no impact to the PUB. Uh, what I'd like to do is to have uh, Leandro Garcia, our CFO, uh, go over the, the uh, changes, uh, what the revenue reductions would be to PUB, and what impact it would have on the city of Brownsville. <coughs> Thank you, Leandro. Mayor, Commissioners, I'm Leandro Garcia, CFO for Brunswick PUB. Uh, we've handed out a summary of the, uh, of the ordinance change, uh, and uh, we're reflecting here uh, the impact, as John uh, mentioned. Uh, we have uh, prepared a financial plan for fiscal year 2008 that incorporates these changes and, and are ready to proceed with these changes uh, if, if the Commission approves them on October uh, 1st, uh, 2007. The first section, we have a couple of changes that are that are incorporated in, in our rate ordinance. So we're bringing these two uh, to the commission for approval. The first one being uh, an electric residential <laughs> customer service charge change. We currently assess um, $5.53 a month to residential customers uh, receiving electric service. The revised uh, uh, charge has been reduced to $2.53, uh, a $3 reduction. Uh, on item B, the late penalty fee, uh, which is assessed on the total bill for customers uh, 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 falling behind on their payment uh, is currently at 10 percent and on October 1st uh, if approved it'll be reduced to 5 percent. Uh, we're reflecting the revenue impact here because it does affect the uh, based on the uh, the new uh, calculation for the for the city transfer it does affect the, the city transfer with respect to to the revenues that, that PUB generates. Uh, impact here combined uh, results in three million eighty four thousand five seventy nine <coughs> in revenue reductions now the board also approved a non rate ordinance a non rate ordinance change in other words uh, this other fee is not part of the ordinance but it has been incorporated in PUB's financial plan that uh, entails raising the rate connection uh, for non-payment fee from twenty five dollars to seventy five dollars uh, fifty dollar increase which we anticipate will generate about seven hundred nineteen thousand when you combine both uh, both adjustments here to revenues, uh, we have a net change of two million three sixty five one hundred four in revenues, uh, based on the current calculation. Ten percent uh, does go to the city, uh, so the city, in essence, uh, the impact is two hundred thirty six thousand five hundred ten dollars uh, reduction there. Uh, here again, as John mentioned, this this effort or this action was uh, uh, intended to provide relief to our customers. And uh, we have prepared a financial plan that incorporates the changes and we'll proceed on October 1 with a new fiscal year 2008 uh, budget. Okay, uh, let me give you a little history on this, uh, Commissioners. About two years ago, I brought this issue to the, to the board, PB board, and it was rejected, uh, reducing the 10% to 5%. Uh, I brought it back again to see if there would be support for it. Uh, when was this? Two months ago? July. Yeah, July. And uh, the reason I did this is because I felt, n knowing that Brownsville has a high poverty rate, uh, some people cannot make their uh, monthly bill payment on time. And the penalty of 10% uh, 
is far more than what a bank charges you to, 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 on a loan or even gives you on a, on a savings account. And I thought that was kind of unfair to be penalizing our citizens. Uh, I asked the, um, the management and the, and the, and the finance uh, director to, to find a way, when I sat with them privately before I brought it back to the board, to see if we could find a way to reduce the 10 to 5 percent which I think is, is, is more fair, and to reduce um, the, the electrical side only service charge from 553 to 253. And then it was brought to the board uh, to see if, it would, if there was any support for it. The board did uh, support it, so and then a, a resolution was introduced to, to make it formal. And that resolution is here before you. And I think Commissioner Garza was there when we did this uh, initially. And uh, it was passed unanimously by the PUB board. And I believe this commission should also pass it. We are asking for uh, the first reading and intend to come back on September 18th for the second reading. I, I have a question, Mayor. Mm -hmm. Commissioner, mm -hmm. excuse me. Has this been adopted yet? No, it will take effect October approval. 1. So it's got to be after this, the, the second reading on right? September 18th, yes. My, my other question is, um, I want to know maybe uh, Pete Gonzalez, are you here, Pete? As, at a time that we're hearing like from the Brownsville uh, Museum of Fine Arts and the zoo and everybody, uh, the Mid-Cultural District, you know, everybody's needing money. How is this going to affect our cash transfer from PUB to the city? At a time we need we need money for our budget, we keep hearing we need I don't money. Mayor, can city can city I say something? Wait, wait, say. Let, 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 let the commissioner uh, finish no, with this question. question. I'm not and then Commissioner Hackerson, uh, let's allow. Let's agree to disagree. I mean, if the commissioner doesn't want to support this. That's fine. But uh, mayor, allow don't, him don't to speak. Don't add words to my mouth. I didn't, no, I said, I didn't support if do, it. If you do, I you said, don't. I'm asking Commissioner, a question. Please. I'm asking okay, a question. one person speak at a time. Go ahead, Pete. Go ahead, Let, Pete. Wait a second. One person at a time. Come on, guys. Uh, Commissioner Cisneros, if you want to support it, you don't. That's up to you. Ask a question. And, and Mayor, uh, once again, do not add words to me to what I'm saying, OK? I'm not adding don't words. Don't be grandstanding. I'm asking a question I'm to Pete Gonzalez. Commissioner, I please direct out. your questions to the. Go ahead, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Commissioner Cisneros, the, uh, the 236000 obviously, with the financial conditions that we're in right now on the budget definitely this this is something that we could have that we if you approve this we're not going to have uh, the uh, transfer that that we have already in the budget already has this reduction the 236,000 okay. that, that's my question but I would certainly like I'm to sure have I'm it. sure Pete I'm sure you want more money all the time but I just want to make sure that you've counted that Commissioner in Mr. Clare has a question for the record I'm not opposing it I just want to make sure that you know okay. We're going through a budget process and we make the right decisions right now, you know? Yeah. Commissioner Trani? This fiscal budget, that you, this fiscal year that you're coming up with the budget right now, you've already taken that money out, you've already allocated that, correct? The number that, yes, the number that the PUB has given me for as the cash transfer already includes this reduction. Okay. And in this fiscal year that we're talking about right now, you've allocated 325000 to the museum, correct? Uh, it was allocated the museum, to various, the zoo. various the zoo was 325000 for the zoo. Yep. For the zoo. Correct. And then for the umbrella group for <coughs> the cultural district, that was going to be another 300 and some odd thousand dollars. 325000 The same number. Same number, 325000 right? Correct. Okay. And this money is essentially being taken out of the budget by the mayor and what had happened over at PUB, right? That um, number, yes, has been reduced, correct. The answer Thank is you. yes. And let me say this, I probably, if blame wants to be placed on me for lowering rates for the citizens of Brownsville, nope. I'll accept that blame. Uh, we can always do more. I just feel very strongly that 10% is too high of a penalty for our, our customers who own their own utility company to be paying that kind of penalty. That's my, and that's what the PB board passed unanimously. If anybody has disagreed with that, well, that's the time to vote right here. It's got to come before the commission to be adopted. That's the, the, the way the charter is written up. Is there any question? Commissioner Atkinson. I just want to say this is a good thing for Brownsville. I don't know why there's even debate or I think it's just trying to debate. It doesn't matter. It's, this is for the, the poor of our community. Well, I don't think we have any. Saved. I know that. I'm not saying that. Look, look it up there. Late penalty fee, 10%. 
Some of these people are late with their bill. They're just getting a break. And it's not people like us here. It's always the people on the poverty level that they need help. You know, you keep snagging them with 10% and 15%. They never get out. This is a good way to help these people and to bring down the service charge. You know, people complain that we were elected to drop rates. Well, we're doing it. And, but no matter what the mayor does, somebody wants to oppose it, even when he has a good idea. And I just, it's sickening. Yeah to see people who want to do that when he's in the right, you know what I mean? And, and not that I'm protecting him because he has done some crazy stuff, but you know what? <laughs> for all practical matters, he's doing what's right for Brownsville. And if you just let him and listen instead of opposing him every three seconds, he really has some good ideas. He really does. Um, this is one of them. Thank for you, the record, we're, we're decreasing the fee, right? Not, not the rate? It's a fee? Okay. And we have decreased the rate also. Here. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is a public hearing. Uh, is there anybody opposing this, uh, <laughs> Mr. Reese? Please come forward, Mr. Reese. Thank you, Commissioner. One minute. Honor, well, Mayor and Commissioners. A lot of people, like you, presenting the figures. I have always said that the ten percent, ten percent is usury and usury is not permitted in the state of Texas. That's number one. I said that a long time ago. What we have to do is bring the cost of producing electricity down. That way you can bring the rates down. And that way people don't have to uh, miss their payment. You see? It's very simple, you know? I, I just, uh, the honeymoon I was over, I told you, uh, my water bill went from 33 to $100. You know, the honeymoon is over. Maybe I'm being penalized because I'm coming here and speaking <laughs> against the PUB. Uh, That's I'm okay. Sure. I can afford to pay it. But you I'm know sure. what? I'm, I'm sure. not through with the PUB yet because if you're producing the electricity, you have a right to charge me the extra rate. But if you're not producing and you're buying it from the wholesaler and you're not being accountable to the people of that, mm -hmm. then you're committing a crime. And this is what we have to check on. I mean, this is what we have to check on. Why do we need a middleman buying our electricity when we buy it from the wholesaler also. Why do we need him for? If we can buy it at seven cents a kilowatt hour, why do I need Pancho Pelotas to go and buy it for me? I can go buy it myself. Why do we need to send somebody? We need to bring our rates down because you know what? The economy is not getting any better, sir. That's right. And you know, with a subprime rate, because you know what happened with a subprime rate? because people didn't know what they were doing. They were going for the, everything the person had. They, they financed them at a higher rate interest, and now everything has tumbled down. And everything is going to continue to tumble. Don't think you're gonna have it made. Because let me tell you, I do my homework when I come here. Mr. Mr. Reese, can I interject a minute? Uh, Leandro, uh, John, would you be kind enough to, to have somebody check his meter? Because if it went from $33 a month to 100 there's got to be something wrong. That's okay, it, sir, it, because I, I can afford it. I have no problem with no, that. No, no, but, <laughs> no, 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 no. He but checked no, my but, meter but, five but times in five let, years. Let, let me interject. Let me interject. I assure you, you're not being penalized because you come here and speak. Sure, that's okay. I don't mind it because you know what? But I, I can always come here because you're a nice person and you let me speak my mouth out <laughs> because I have a right to do it also because five times they changed my meter in five years. Okay. But would you, would, you, would you mind get, get, getting with him and also uh, get with him on the rates because the rates have been lowered, uh, Mr. Reese. We have been lowering the rates and we are uh, uh, generating energy also. We buy some on the spot market. We do that, but we're, 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 we're purchasing a good, the majority share for, that we're generating, okay? Sure. <clears throat> I so, you, sir, this is why you're there. And thank you, there thank you. But I would like for you to get with him. And I trust Mr. Buziak, it's just that I'm trying to say, let's do business the right way. Okay. Right. I don't need any intermediates to do my business for me. And you know what? I'm tired of paying high electrical rates. We need to, what's going on? Either that or close the shop. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Reese. Okay. I have a motion. Okay, this is a public hearing. Is anybody else uh, for or against? Can I have a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. I'd close by well, Commissioner. Hold on. Wants to say I, just want to say, may I, I just want to say, uh, uh, Mr. Buziak, uh, we, the city of Brownsville, have worked very hard. We're working very hard on our budget, and we're cutting, and we're cutting, and we're cutting. I'm asking PUB to try your best to cut wherever you can cut. We need to help the citizens of Brownsville now. 
Okay, we have to. please. We have done that. I got an idea. When you all transfer, he charges the retail rate. Why don't you charge the city the wholesale rate? Okay, uh, that's a separate issue. But why not? Right? Uh, the, the, why the, are we going to charge the retail rate? Um, so move the we close. We have mayor? a motion to close the public Second. hearing by Commissioner Snellis. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner uh, Camarillo. You all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries to close the um, public hearing. And I want to make a comment now, that I was satisfied with uh, Pete uh, Gonzalez's comments. He already uh, adjusted the budget to meet this. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Uh, Second. Uh, okay, we got a motion by Com Commissioner Cisnero, seconded by Commissioner Longoria. And I hope people won't vote against it because I brought it to the front. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Mike. Unanimously. That's great. Wow. Thanks. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> great. Okay. <laughs> the next item, uh, C Secretary. Item five, public hearing and action on first reading of protested ordinance number 235-2007. 026 to rezone from dwelling Z classification to general retail G general retail 4 CG classification on lot 18 block 5 of Villanueva subdivision located near US 281 and El Metro Street Honorable Mayor and City Commissioners uh, the area is here stated in red uh, this is the Villanueva subdivision uh, Alton Glor is right here Flor de Mayo um, in this particular case the applicant would like to have a tire shop uh, the uh, PNZ denied this application uh, <coughs> unanimously. Uh, the the reasons why is that the the area uh, there was a northwest study area uh, that developed a a land use plan, and the land use plan calls for a third commercial. In this particular case, they would need a fourth commercial. But it is residential in nature. There are a little bakery shop right here. Uh, other than that, it's basically large country lots, uh, very old community. What land monuments do you, uh, everybody can recognize? Uh, a monument? L land monument. What, what, what well, you have the intersection of Alton Glor uh -huh. and Flor de Mayo. There is a military highway. Okay. And there is a new subdivision, uh, Vea Vista, right here. Mm -hmm. um, and this is all vacant land here, but this is the uh, residential neighborhood here. So you're going west on okay. 281 military. And let me ask you, did they submit any plans and specifications? No, no, Nothing? This is a, a, a blanket zoning, fourth commercial. So they can do anything they want? That's within the first com fourth commercial. But in this particular case, the applicant in this application said he wanted a time. What's staff's time. recommendation? Staff recommendation was, was to deny, okay. basically, because the city commission and the PNZ approved the plan. PNZ denied it, okay. This is a public hearing. Do we have anybody in favor or against? here uh, both the applicant and the um, please come forward been with any designs of, of how this uh, proposed uh, tire shop would look like any plans drawings oh, no submitted? no no they didn't it was just a request for rezoning please come forward state your name in English or Spanish uh, whatever you feel comfortable with English is fine okay my name is Ricardo Flores and I live uh, adjacent to the property actually well there's two right of ways in between but um you oppose it or you support it? I, I oppose it being that what i see from tire shops is really a lot of tires okay. you know bunched up and <laughs> usually we live next to the pretty pretty much next to the river and we we already have enough mosquitoes there okay thank you and your name ricardo flores flores okay mr flores thank you mr. is flores. anybody else uh, here for or against Okay, staff recommendations against it. Can I have a motion to close public hearing? Move to close. Move to close. Yes. Got a motion to close it. Mr. Garza, a, a second? Second. Second by Mr. Atkinson. All in favor to close? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. This is an action item. Can I have a motion to either approve to deny. or deny? Second. Motion by Mr. Atkinson, seconded by Mr. Cisneros. Camarillo. Camarillo. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries to deny. Okay. Item six. Item six, public hearing and action on first reading of protested ordinance number 235-2007-037-S to allow an apartment specific use triplex in a dwelling G classification for lot 26 block one out of Portway Acres located near State Highway 48 and Zena Drive. Honorable Mayor, City Commission, this, this item is not uh, no longer protested. 
Um, it's the, the it is protest or it is not, not it is not, not protest so there's a typo here I mean yes okay yes. This, okay it's, it's actually okay. the way that we received it from yes, planning it's, it's our error. <laughs> it's okay um, and, and oh human hey, okay take it easy. okay go on okay take it easy. Well, uh, uh, <laughs> and it's not a typo no it is it's contagious okay <laughs> it's not protested okay it's not, not protested, protested. Um, this this is Portway Acres Drive. Uh, this is the lot in question. For, for There's one. already a, a triplex here, and and a different family, different applicant wants to have one run adjacent to it. Uh, <coughs> the Plans are in commission were unanimously to approve this. So you recommend to approve. Yes. Any questions? This is a public hearing. Anybody against it? Come forward, speak for or against. Move to close. Second. Closed by Commissioner Atkinson. Seconded by Commissioner um, Garza. All in favor to close. I uh, motion, motion carries. Second. <laughs> motion by approved. To second. approve by Mr. Atkinson, seconded by Mr. Triani. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Item number seven. Item number seven, public hearing and action on first reading of protested ordinance number 235-2007-002-SA to allow a professional office in a dwelling zoning in a dwelling zoning of lot three block one of diamond point two located near alton glor and tandy road um i don't know city commission at this time is also not protested um in this particular case this is an amendment to a specific use uh about a year ago the applicant submitted a specific use application uh for an office building in this lot uh, the market conditions uh, he realized that he for the size of building that he promised this Commission that he would build uh, was not was not cash flowing was not economically feasible he would like to increase that building by 2,500 feet more and there is a site plan and and just expanding the building the same architecture the same colors same landscaping will not change he only wants to make his building larger so it can uh, it can cash flow better uh, the planning zoning commission ordered unanimously to to make the uh, approve the amendment to the specific use um, there's a, a layout of the building so so you can see uh, right now we'll get a layout of the building um, that would uh, show the 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 increase in size of uh, who's the architect um, I do not um, uh, do not recall who the architect is, but uh. Ben. So P and Z uh, unanimously voted to deny or approve? to approve the amendment. So why does it say deny on the? So it's not protested. Is this no, type? it's not protested. It's another type. Is it a typo on the document? On our yes, yes. It is a typo. Yes, yes. Just want to. No, they, they they approved it. Okay. Miscommunication, let's say. Okay. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> motion to close public hearing. Second. No yeah. error. <laughs> Just miscommunication. Okay. We have a motion by Commissioner Atkins oh, to close minute, public hearing. Okay. Is there somebody here to oppose or support? Yes, ma'am. State your name, please. I'm sorry. My name is Judy King, and I live in Lakeway, and it's adjacent to the Diamond Point neighborhood that this is uh, about. I just have a question, and that is uh, the original application for the specific use was for professional offices only. And is that still the case, is, or has it changed to anything about retail? No, it's professional offices. No, but there was some, we approved something last year, Ben, to allow a, a, a developer to, to put some office there or to, to provide it. He changed it. There was something that went on last year. Rick Caballero. Huh? Rick Caballero. Caballero, who is not the same. This is not the same Close case. Line. That's a different. Yeah, it's a different, oh, it's a different, different property. He tried to explain the importance of the specific use ordinance, and uh, he was granted a. Um, he was That's granted a, a, a C, right, or something like that. That's a different issue. And soon after, his property has been put up for sale. Yeah, I know. Uh, question is I guess I was not at the uh, PNZ meeting a couple of weeks ago but I thought there was something said about uh, uh, <coughs> Mr. Garcia wanted to change this to uh, to retail now instead of professional office buildings for like maybe a daycare and a health food store and that's my question is this still professional offices only and the reason I say that is because Mr. Garcia's original narrative when he was applying for the specific use um, uh, 
ordinance was for attorney's offices, medical offices, insurance offices, accounting, notary public, and, and, and so forth, but were all professional offices. And in the restrictions for the uh, specific use ordinance, I believe, was included that uh, there would be no retail um, restaurant or liquor sales or consumption, that businesses are to be limited to professional offices only. I just wanted to make sure that that's, that's, that's what's happening. Let me uh, ben, please. Uh, in this particular case, yes, the applicant would like to have a daycare uh, in in the um, in this part of the building, further away from the from the street, and and he did uh, talk about a uh, food store on this side of the building, a natural foods store. So it's office retail. Yes. Yeah. Well. So here's his well, professional office. It's professional office, but under under the conditions that the PNZ uh, is recommending to you is to allow for a daycare and, and a natural food store on that property. So those are conditions that allowing those retails in the specific use. I guess the concern I have is that it just says professional offices. It doesn't get into all of these other use factors that you're now providing. Well, and the packet doesn't indicate that either. Okay. Um, but there is a narrative right now. There's a narrative that goes along with the site plan that identifies the, the, the user, and that's what he's committed to do. He, but that, that narrative is not included in the packet, so we wouldn't have had that information. And that information was not provided to the residents. It's my understanding that the uh, request was made the day of the PNZ meeting. I'm going to table it. Just table it. When, when we uh, send the advertisement to the uh, newspaper, no, it wasn't submitted. It was submitted after we sent the, the ad to the newspaper. It was at the, at the public hearing with the PMC. Uh, the narrative was uh, on and the were, were the neighbors notified? Uh, the, the letters we never notified stating exactly what is, uh, is the, uh, we notified that this is going to be a specific use of uh, the public hearing and the date and the time and but the place. You, but you can see how the residents can feel that they're being misled into believing. Pardon me? Uh, Mr. Reese was here at the PNZ. Well, that's not the point. The point is that everybody should have the opportunity and should be notified. <laughs> okay. Um, any other questions? Okay. Any, close. Anybody guessed it? Moved to close by Commissioner Atkinson. Second. Second by Commissioner Triani. All in favor to close? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Um, Move the table. I, I have a concern, Mr. Mayor, and uh, Commissioner, Commissioner Atkinson uh, just made a motion to table, and I second that motion. Okay, motion to table by Mr. Atkinson and seconded by Mr. Garza. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries.